Hey, it's Big T. Uh, today I'm going to tie a fly called the Blue Ice Midge. It's a fly that I've done well with. I gave it to a buddy and he slayed a bunch of fish one time on a different river on the Tuckaseegee. And so he wanted to tie some of his own up and I figured I'd put a video out. That way he can follow along. What we have is a size 16 midge hook with a 2.4 millimeter black nickel bead. You can also use silver if you wish. And what I'm going to do is just use a black 70 denier Danville thread. The first thing that we're going to do is tie in some tinsel. This is a UTC tinsel. It's pearl. Let's see if I can reach back here and grab it. Uh, it's UTC pearl ice blue tinsel. And it's a pearl, it has a pearl look, pearlescent look to it, but it also has a blue hue to it. And hopefully that'll show well on the camera. We're going to tie that in behind the bead and wrap it down around the hook bend about halfway. I'm just going to cover that real well with thread. And then I'm going to come in with a stripped peacock hurl. This is the eye of a peacock that I have stripped. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, I do sell them uh, in the store and I've dyed some as well, but you have to... Easiest way I've found is to put, put those in a jar with a 50-50 bleach and water mixture, shake it for the right amount of time to get the little fibers off and then neutralize it real quickly with baking soda. So one strip will look like this. So the nice thing about this particular uh, material is that it gives it a really neat segmented look. I've tried tying these without this step hoping that it would work and they just don't seem to be quite as effective. I am going to use the rotary feature on this fly, but you can simply wrap this if you'd like. These tend to be pretty brittle, so you just have to be careful as you start. But if you can see the segmented look this gives, it's very hard to replicate that. I do have some synthetic quills and I know they're coming out. I think they're improving on those. But so far the natural ones to me have been hard to beat. Take my hackle pliers off. Trim off that excess. I'm going to really wrap down to make sure I have that secured in there. I'm going to plan on catching a bunch of fish with this fly. So I'm going to get a little zappa gap and just paint that on top. The reason I'm doing this is I have had days where I've caught a ton of fish. And if you don't do that, this tinsel will tend to fray and come off. And so the next thing I'm going to do is wrap the tinsel. We want those coming up and touching wraps. And as you can see, it's going to allow the segmentation of that peacock hurl to come through. But it's going to give it and again, hopefully this is showing up right on the video. It's going to give it a, a flashy blue hue to it. 
Blue's a color I really like throwing in on flies. It's something that's visible, highly visible, especially in deep water. Last step to this fly is going to be a little bit of hairs ear dubbing. This is just a blend I make. You can use any type of hairs here. And I'm going to put it on a little bit. Generous. And also, I'm not going to twist that real tight to the thread. That way a lot of the fibers will pick off and it will look a little more leggy up front. Lastly, put a little more Zappa Gap on the thread. Wrap that a few times and then we'll go into the whip finish. And that will finish this fly. Uh, great fly. Anywhere you're catching fish on Rainbow Warriors, this would be a good substitute for that or a good addition to that, rather. Um, but anytime mergers are present, this is a good good fly to fish anywhere in the 14 to as small as 22. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and visit my store for these materials or more.